Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic. If you own a lake home or have a pond on your property, call my friends at Aquaside so you can get rid of the weeds and algae that are freaking the kids out. They have a complete line of lake and control products that take care of that stuff. The products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. There is no need to let weeds or gunk overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside today. Describe your problem. They'll get you the right products. And your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. That is the wrong song. Yeah, let's, let's try it from that. the top and do this one instead. Hail the flashlight, King. Yeah. Yeah. And now, from the Attaboy mayor's Reavers. office above the yep. boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, <laughs> it's Garage Logic. With Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, kind of. Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. I love when a, a show of any kind starts and, and you're, everything's going perfectly until three seconds in. Yeah. <laughs> it's Friday. It tends to happen. And then everything just goes <laughs> the hell in a hand. I'm telling you right, I'm not mailing it in. I promise I'm not mailing it in. <laughs> it may sound like that, but... You know, the mayor is off, and I, there is a little bit of mailing it in. I'm sensing it. I don't know. It was... I hate to call you out on that. But no, that's right okay. off the bat. Right. I just like how, you know, when we inform the public on social media um, that you're going to be <laughs> filling in, the, the reaction is mostly, mostly positive. That's what I truly appreciate mm -hmm. about our listeners <laughs> in, in Garage Logic. <laughs> there were many exceptions to that. You know what I love about you, though, Tom, in all seriousness? You don't shy away from it. Like, okay, fine. You're going to take a cheap <laughs> right. shot? Let's go. Home. It's great. No, it was, that was shot. fun. You were, you were entertaining me yesterday with that. That was great. I like to fire the cheap shots <laughs> right back when you have anonymous uh twitter hacks right. to say uh unkind things uh it just uh, it amuses me well, and some of these people are probably my relatives <laughs> but true. i wouldn't know because they are using cowardly fake names so you don't know who they are but given what you do for a living that's got to be constant no matter what constant. story that you put it out there it's, oh. it's you're getting you know we hate cops. We love every Democrat. We uh, hate Republicans. We love every Republican. We hate every Democrat. It just depends upon right. the day and what the news is of the day. And then it's just it, it, it's remarkable to me. But we, we talked about that a little bit yesterday, and I'm dumbfounded. By the way, Tom Hauser in for the mayor Thank today. You. Hi, Tom. I wonder for who the, you for were. the seggy. <laughs> some, days, <laughs> some days I wonder who yes. I am. Those anonymous accounts, too, somehow all come from Heights Basement. I don't know yeah. why that, that seems to. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have uh, been able to drill down to that. Jen, I don't know. It's probably a coincidence. Narrow it down, probably, triangulate the signal. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly your neighborhood, but do, we're do, doing some further triangulation, and it is leading to your basement. I, uh, um, I will have to plead the fifth. I do not know, sir. Are you wearing, right. are you wearing boxer shorts right now? And that's all. <laughs> no, and, yeah. and is that your mom's house? Is that because that's I believe where it's most definitely of, in the basement. That's where most of those comments are coming from. <laughs> lonely, lonely people in mom's basement. But uh, anyway, uh, I read this yesterday, and I want you guys. You know, there's one word that might allow you to pick up on what sport this is, but I finally understand. If I were somebody from Pakistan and I heard somebody write a story about a hockey game or a baseball game or a football game about how it might seem like a complete foreign language, mm -hmm. just the description of the game. Okay. So let me read uh, to you and you tell me what sport this is. And then I will continue on because it is uh, the way they wrote this story. It's as if everyone knows exactly what sport this is and what all of these things mean. The United States scored a major upset at the T20 World Cup by beating heavyweight Pakistan in the Super Over on Thursday. I saw this. <laughs> it was the co-host's second straight victory in Group A after it romped to a seven-wicket win over Canada. Aaron Jones, who smashed a 40-ball unbeaten 94 in the opening game, 
once again starred for the home team when he helped stretch the game into super over with another <laughs> vital knock of 36, not out, off 26. Jones hit a six and then a single before Nidish Kumar. That guy could be a star in any sport in any league. Uh, Nidish Kumar's boundary off the final ball tied the score finally at 159 at the end of regulation. However, Pakistan, it turns out, panicked in the super (laughs) over when much experienced fast bowler Muhammad Amir Gave away 18 runs, sounds like Pablo Lopez last night, <laughs> that included seven runs off wide balls. Again, sounds like Pablo Lopez yeah. last night. He did walk six people and hit a batter. But anyway, I digress. Left arm fast bowler, Sarub Netravolkar. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a Star Wars character. Right. <laughs> who earlier bowled brilliantly and grabbed 2 18 off his four overs, conceded only 13 runs. In the Super Over to earn the U.S. its most historic 2020 win over Pakistan, the 2022 runner-up and the 2009 champion. Meanwhile, Iftikhar Ahmed smashed boundary off the Netra Volkar's second ball before holding out at long off as the left arm seamer kept his cool. Of course he did. And snatched a famous win. <laughs> For the U.S., it was a disastrous start for Captain Babar Azam. <laughs> You're doing good, <laughs> Babar yeah. Azam's Pakistan, which is due to meet arch rival India in the next game at New York on Sunday. And huh. I can't wait for the account of that game. What like sport? Play by play. What sport am I talking about? Bowling, cricket. Nope. Cricket. You are right, yep. yeah. Mr. Johnny. We were talking about. I thought wicket would give it away. Wicket and cricket. I'm simply going by the rhyme. If the word wicket were not in there, I, I would think maybe the Australian Australian rules football, maybe. The runs yeah, that, thing, and the uh, there was one other thing that sounded kind of like baseball, I thought. So I thought, uh, must must be cricket. So that yeah, I, I don't remember what the expression was. It, it is funny how there are some similarities. You have a left-arm seamer. That could be yeah. like a left-handed pitcher. Sure. A uh, guy throwing, uh, they scored seven runs off wide balls. Yeah. Well, you know, hey now, who doesn't? Hey now. Who doesn't these days? You know, <laughs> why did I look at rookie when I said? Why? Yeah, why? Exactly. I don't know why. I, 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 I track these. When, I, when I saw this story, do you know what the most surprising aspect of this story was to me? What's that? The fact that the number one overall seed in the world was Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I never would have guessed that in They're a million good at years. Something? But it Those, is cricket. It cricket. Is cricket yeah. So uh, India you know, and Pakistan. We've, we don't have powers. a lot of, you know, we're not grooming cricket players in this country, you know, in high school. Well, uh, I guess. Or youth leagues. So not that I'm trying to. to if we did, we would probably be number one. Well, I'm not a homer yeah. at all. Well, Hell I guess yeah. well, I'm not trying to diminish the <laughs> accomplishments, <laughs> yeah. but I guess when yeah, you're thinking you about when you're thinking about establishing, a, a you know, a, a, a number one program, I don't think Pakistan would have the, the type of resources. I guess that's just what I'm. They've always been the oh, one of the powers. That. Them and India are the two big cricket powers oh, in, I, okay. uh, in the world. Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, have you ever watched cricket and tried to figure it out? A little bit, only the <laughs> clips. Can't, can't. I tried, and I have no. Even when they start explaining it, I have no clue what they're talking about. So, well, because I, I, I want the outfielder have a glove. How's he exactly, supposed to catch the yeah. ball with his bare hand? Yeah, and yeah. then th- this is one where they're they are. Swinging, right? They're, they have, yep. Is it like a more like a paddle? That's right. it's, yep. almost like a bat, but it's more yep. of a paddle, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's hard to figure out, but I know uh, my new favorite player is Iftikhar Ahmed. Oh, well, yeah. Although Nidish Kumar, between the two of them, I mean, yeah. I have all their cricket cards. <laughs> Like good bubblegum. Yes. Pakistani bubblegum just doesn't seem like it's a good thing. <laughs> well, well, it couldn't be much worse than what it's we used tough. to get in our package of tops. Oh my god. Remember yeah. when you'd buy rectangular those rectangular paint? And and it would it would break apart in your hands. Yeah, it's not supposed yeah. to be like a it's not supposed to be like come a host. No. A <laughs> and then yeah. you but you'd chew it and oh the flavor for about three seconds was yep. awesome. Yeah. And then you're going, what is this rubbery substance I'm chewing right now that has <laughs> yeah. no taste? left whatsoever and then you went back to big league chew yes. yeah <laughs> but anyway let's I, make some gum look like I mean, chewing tobacco so the know, youth of america will be we're, we're always looking for ways to make our next a million maybe cricket cards 
Okay. Our, you start yeah. the trend. Maybe our next hundred, anyway. I don't know about a million, but we probably well, make a hundred bucks. If it catches on, we might. Reavers is going to have his kids in well, uh, cricket. Camp. I was just about to say, you guys do know that baseball cards are making a huge comeback right now, right? Well, trading cards in general, I guess, is what I should say. Because John, John, weren't we talking about this? Was that you? I was discussing this. I don't think so. A little, but... a little while ago, but kids are now really starting to get into. Uh, but I think it's the whole aspect of whether it's tops, Fleer, Panini, whoever. They all decided he said Panini. that. Can well, you say Panini on the sure, radio? Sure. Well, they're they're a big, big the player right now. But yeah, in any yeah, event, they're, they're coming out with these unique ones where they're making you know one Mike Trout card. I'm just using him as an example, and because of the, the rarity now, they're that's what all these kids are getting. They want to get that rare card because it's yeah. going to be worth a fortune. The, there are many the, one of ones now. Yeah. Well, yeah the the, the reason the, they fell in value and interest was when they started mass producing yeah. in the 1980s. Yeah. Yep. Like if you look at You'll see those ads in the paper about people buying gold and watches and right. jewelry, and they want baseball cards, and they want them like pre-1978 yep. because yep. there got to be a certain year where there were – and Tops no longer had the monopoly. Remember, for a long time, there right. was only right. Tops, yep. and then it became Tops and Donruss and uh, Fleer. Stadium, Fleer, yep. uh, a lot of those – you can tell I was a baseball card collector, and yeah. I got both of my boys into it. Did your, oh, your yeah, boys into it? Oh yeah, both my kids are into it. Big and they, time. I remember, yeah. and I miss those days. We were talking about youth sports, and you know how I miss that. Although I love having my weekends back. Uh, yeah, what's that like? I remember mm. when they used to, my, my sons and their friends would have their cards in like an album, and then they'd go back and forth to each other's houses and trade. I mean, I felt That's like it cooler. was back in the 1960s again. This was in the early to late 2000s, 2008, nine, when that was my son, Nick, was right in his wheelhouse, about eight years old. God, and they had all these baseball cards. Uh, sadly, uh, those cards probably not worth much because there were so many of them. Right. Vita you know, Blue, Vita Blue. You Vita can put Blue. your hand on a Vita Blue card. I still have a. I my dad took me out to see Vita Blue when he remember he was the phenom. Yeah, back sure. then, yep. Oakland A's. We went out to Met Stadium and watched Fight of Blue, and I have a button. I have to find it. It's something. It was just a blue button. I know. Imagine that. Roses are red. Uh, Vita is blue. I was there. Him to pitch with you or something. I forget what I said. But I, uh... but I do. Ha I still have that button. And you know, Vita Blue passed away, didn't he? Just recently. Yeah, in the last two I hope years. I, yep. I hope I didn't did. prematurely. Uh, okay. No, right. Yeah, that's uh, Reggie's job. He likes to kill him off early. Kill him prematurely. If I may uh, present myself as king of the geek. Yes, absolutely. I, uh, well, I think that wasn't that done already. I, uh, probably <laughs> about 10 to 15 years ago, I got on this craze where I wanted to get uh, cards from when I was growing up that my older brothers had because I was born in 57. So we, Dick, my older brother had cards from 55 to you know 70. Say. So I collected the entire set of tops 58s, 59s. 60s and 71s. Wow. So I, I could I own those entire sets. Did you buy um, them a uh, piecemeal or did you buy uh, them all at once? Mostly mostly piecemeal uh because I would have had to you know the set will go for 4 grand and I I'm not going to throw out 4 grand at a time. So I'd go on eBay and it took me I'll bet 6 7 years to collect all these sets. Uh and I would and there's some cards in all those sets that the single card can be anywhere from 75 to $300. And no. I wasn't going to do that. So I just kept looking and looking and looking and looking until I, are could you, find are you one wow. of those really finicky that has to be yeah. mint condition or are you Absolutely good? Are you, are you, cause I'm good with very good to excellent. I don't want yeah. one that's been in rookie space. Yeah. <laughs> <what I'm> right. <laughs> Especially <laughs> with the, the sets I'm talking about, you know, if you're looking for a 58 mantle, you're going to pay two grand. If you want mint, I'm not, I wasn't going to do that. So I got a 58 mantle. That's in okay shape. It doesn't look awful. It doesn't look great, you know, for much cheaper. So yeah, I, I was very discerning. I didn't want to spend. Well, it, it's so funny. Much. Maybe you're going to inspire me because uh, I do have some complete sets from when, from the early to mid seventies mm -hmm. when I was able to kind of like collect on my own, but the set I really want to complete is the 1967 set. Yeah. And the reason I want to do that is I was six years old at the time and I would, my older brothers uh, who were uh, seven or eight years older than me had collected cards and 67 was a year they had collected yeah. uh, mm -hmm. a lot of cards. Yep. When they needed money, 
you know, as they became teenagers or were getting out of the baseball card game, and then I'm coming up through the ranks. I'm one of, you know, eight kids, six boys. Right. I would go to my dad, and they knew this. I would go to my dad, and old Doc Hauser would open his wallet. I go, Dad, I want to buy some baseball cards from Greg and Steve. And they would open, he would open his wallet, and he'd give me, you know, nice. five bucks. Sure. And I'd go buy five bucks worth of 1967 cards. My brothers thought they were fleecing me and my dad. Sure. And I'm getting the last laugh because right. some of those cards from 67 sure. are awesome. The problem yeah. with trying to complete that, and I, I forget, it's maybe a, 600 and john maybe you can look this up it's 675 cards something like that mm -hmm. but they used to sell them by series so and they would they would sell them <laughs> like the first series would come out early in the spring then the second series a little later in the spring then the third yeah. series and so on so when you get to the sixth or seventh series they're selling those in the fall and all the kids have already moved on to football and sure. hockey yeah. yep. and so they wouldn't sell as many of them and so therefore they didn't manufacture as many of them so they're more rare so those yeah. cards get really expensive. But you haven't put any thought into it, yeah. have you? No, I put a lot of thought into yeah. it. I'll, I'll give you one other thing with the series thing. I grew up in North Dakota, and we wouldn't get those late series. Seriously, yes. none of the yeah, stores would get them. Even, yeah. So we would go to the lake every year on vacation here in Minnesota, uh, near Purim, Minnesota. Yeah, everybody knows where Purim is, right? And it'd be August when we'd be here. So we would go into town, my brothers and I, and we'd buy up as many baseball cards as we could because they've had they would have series five, six, seven, and and we could get copies of them. Otherwise, we had no way to get them because you couldn't go online, obviously, in 1968 and say, "Hey, I, I want series." Oh, five. I, I was online back then. You weren't Where online. That? Yeah. Well, I grew up in Edina. <laughs> the, I was, was online in 68. <laughs> 609 <laughs> cards in that set. There's then. still a lot of 609? underrated. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. There are still a ton of underrated places because when I was a kid, I, I mean, I'm younger than you guys, but the Elko Flea Market. Because my grandmother, love it. Three three summers every year, I had went to help grandma sell kolachkis and and blankets at the Elko flea market. And when I'd help her, she that give sounds me messy. Five bucks. No, call me. my grandma made the best kolachkis ever. You can't even doubt me. Yes. On this. But anyway, so there was a guy that would sell baseball cards inside one of the barns at the Elko flea market. And I don't know if he's still there because this was a number of years ago, and it's been a while since I've been to the Elko flea market. Same thing. I'd get five, but that was my pay. Was yeah. I'd immediately go get baseball cards. And then yeah. I considered yeah. that a win for slaving away for Grandma Cactavi for 15 hours a day every weekend. I used to ride my <laughs> bike with my friends in my neighborhood where I was growing up in Edina uh, to Kenny's Market off 70th Street. And Kenny's always, they had a big rack of baseball cards cool. there. And we always knew the day when the new ones were coming in. Sure. And there was nothing better than buying that 10 cent pack of baseball cards. And you couldn't wait to open them up, hoping you got a twin right. or, you know, a right. Reggie Jackson or one of the superstars. You're begging sure. for a Harmon card, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and it was so fun. And I, luckily, because of my older brothers, they said, okay, don't put these in your spokes. Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe put so Steve Braun saying. in your spokes. Right, there you go. Or some, <laughs> so, although I did like Steve Braun. Steve Braun was one of my favorite players. I shouldn't, I shouldn't okay, pick on Claude him. Claude L. Washington. Yeah, he maybe was Claude L. Washington. <laughs> put him in your spokes. But uh, they always told me, yeah, don't. So my, I still have my whole collection, and they're. Uh, you know what I've learned from this uh, last ten minutes of discussion? God, we're nerds. Yeah, we yeah, are I really am. nerds. I, no, I we'd be nerds if we it. knew about cricket. We do That's not true. know. <laughs> we just know that Nidish Kumar and Iftikhar Ahmed are our new favorite players.